Hi everyone, welcome to practice problem 80J04. This one's all about adjusting journal entries and the adjusted trial balance. All right, here we go. I've presented you with a short trial balance and two pieces of period and information. I am asking you to record the monthly adjusting journal entries and then to also prepare the adjusted trial balance for the month ended March 31st based on this period and information. So take a moment, pause the video, try it for yourself, and when you're ready, come on back and I will walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So here we go. I'm going to take these in order and I'm going to clear my trial balance out of the way to give me some room to work. First up, it says the note bears 5% interest per year and is collected each November. So first of all, we have to identify what note are they talking about. And for that, I'm going to go back to my trial balance. And I'm going to see notes receivable, $72,000. All right, so let's come over here with that. And I'm going to go ahead and write that $72,000 down at the bottom. So that's my note receivable. It says that the note bears 5% interest per year. All right, so if I take that $72,000, I multiply times 5%. I believe that comes out to $3,600, but let me just... Go ahead and plug that in to make sure my mental math is working here. Yeah, there we go, 3,600. That is interest per year. And then we know that we are only preparing the monthly adjusting journal entries for the month of March. Therefore, we only need one month's worth of interest. So times one over 12 months, that's our partial year. And that is going to come out to $300. And that is the monthly interest. All right, now let's think about what sort of adjustment do we make? And here I am going and putting December just by default. This is March 31st. Remember, adjusting entries are made on the final day of the accounting period. So March 31st, we're going to make our adjusting entry. What adjustment do we make? Well, this is a note and it bears interest. And specifically, it's a note receivable, which means someone owes us money. Any interest generated is ours. It's revenue to us. And even though we're not collecting this anytime soon, a month has gone by, and during that month, we have earned $300 worth of interest. And because we've earned it, we get to record interest revenue Notice I'm crediting this because it's a revenue, $300. Now, what about the debit? Well, if we were getting paid, it would be cash. But then if we look at the information, it told us that we collect this every November. And this is just March. So we're not collecting yet. Therefore, we have to record a receivable that we are going to call interest receivable. And that's our first adjusting entry. Now let's look at number two. Number two says, as of March 31st, so the last day of the period, employees had worked for six business days since last getting paid, and employees earned $13,000 per five-day work week. All right, again, let's do some math down at the bottom. We know they get paid $13,000 per five-day work week, and it tells us that as of the end of the period, they have worked for six days since last getting paid. So times six out of five, because that's how much of the five-day work week they have worked so far. Pull out my calculator again. 13,000 times six out of five comes out to 15,600. This is going to be what the employees have earned over that six days. Adjusting journal entry. Remember, employees have worked. It doesn't matter that we haven't paid them yet. They've worked, so we as a company have incurred the cost of them working. And we call that salaries and wages. And since it's a cost incurred, expense. $15,600. But again, we haven't paid them yet. And so we're not going to record cash out. We are simply going to record salaries and wages payable because we still owe them this money. 
and that's all we need to do for journal entry number two. Notice that as expected from adjusting journal entries, both of them impact one income statement account and one balance sheet account. Okay, now let's try moving on to our trial balance. So on the right, I have returned our original trial balance that was given with the problem. On the left, I have a template in place for the adjusted trial balance. And everything you see in black in here, I have copied over from the original trial balance because it was not impacted by our adjusting journal entries. If something is not impacted by the adjusting journal entries, it will not change between the trial balance and the adjusted trial balance. Only the things impacted by the adjustments change. So we need to fill this in. First up, notice I left a space here for an asset right below cash. The reason for that is as part of this interest, we now have a receivable for the interest that we've earned. And so I need to enter that on our books, interest receivable for $300. Notice I also left a blank below accounts payable the liability section because as part of these entries, we've now created a new liability. Salaries and wages payable for 15,600. And so we're gonna enter that in here as well. Salaries and wages payable. This is a liability, so it goes on the credit side, 15,600. Notice I left two other blanks, one in the revenue area and one in the expense area and that's because we did, as part of these adjusting entries, record interest revenue, as well as salaries and wage expense. And so I'm gonna go ahead and add those in there as well. Interest revenue of 300. And we have SMW expense of 15,600. All right, so we copied over everything that didn't change. We've added in everything that was new. And notice we didn't actually have to change any of the existing numbers because all the adjustments we made in this problem affected something new. Last step to any adjusted trial balance, add up your debits, add up your credits, make sure they're equal before you move on. And so I'm gonna get my calculator out. We'll speed through this. I'm gonna do the debit column first, 263, 500. 500 plus 300 plus, let's see, 20, 32,000 plus 72,000 plus at the bottom there, that's going to be 26,600. So we've got a total now of 394,400 in our debit column. Let's go ahead and check our credits. 42,000 plus 156. Uh, plus 185, plus 57,500, and finally another 94,300 gives us 394, 400. Our debits and credits are equal. We can rest assured that we probably didn't make any obvious errors when doing our adjusted trial, our, our adjusting journal entries, and we're good to go. All right, that's it for this problem. Hope you found it helpful, and I hope you join me for another.